Genghis Khan, born around 1162 in Central Asia, was a formidable Mongolian warrior ruler who established the largest land empire in history. His empire, built through a combination of brutal conquest and strategic alliances, covered over 11 million square miles at its peak, extending from Korea to Europe. This immense empire facilitated contact between Eastern and Western cultures, significantly shaping the course of human history and civilization. Despite his reputation for ruthlessness and bloodshed, Genghis Khan's influence extended beyond mere destruction. He implemented systems of law and order that had lasting impacts on the regions he conquered. His legacy is multifaceted, including not only his role in empire building, but also his impact on global trade, culture, and genetics, as he is believed to have millions of descendants. Genghis Khan's actions and the empire he built irrevocably changed human history, leaving a lasting mark that continues to be felt today. His story is one of both terror and transformation, highlighting his importance as one of the most influential figures in history. In this video, we're going to talk about seven things you probably didn't know about Genghis Khan. Number one, Genghis wasn't his real name. The man who would become the great Khan of the Mongols was born around 1162 near the Onan River and was originally named Temujin, meaning of iron or blacksmith. He received the honorific title Genghis Khan in 1206 during a tribal meeting called a Kurultai, where he was proclaimed leader of the Mongols. While Khan means leader or ruler, the exact origins of Genghis remain unclear. It might have meant ocean or just, but it is commonly interpreted as supreme ruler or universal ruler in context. Number two, he had a rough childhood. From an early age, Genghis Khan faced the harsh realities of life on the Mongolian steppe. When he was only nine, rival Tatars poisoned his father and his own tribe expelled his family, leaving his mother to raise her seven children alone. Genghis grew up hunting and foraging to survive and reportedly killed his half-brother in a dispute over food as an adolescent. During his teenage years, rival clans abducted both him and his young wife, and Genghis endured a period of slavery before making a daring escape. Despite these hardships, Genghis established himself as a formidable warrior and leader by his early 20s. He gathered an army of supporters and forged alliances with key tribal leaders. By 1206, Genghis had consolidated the steppe confederations under his rule and began focusing on external conquests. Number three, there is no definitive record of what he looked like. Despite being a highly influential figure, very little is known about Genghis Khan's personal life or physical appearance. No contemporary portraits or sculptures of him have survived, and existing historical accounts are often contradictory or unreliable. Most descriptions depict him as tall and strong with a flowing mane of hair and a long, bushy beard. A surprising account from the 14th century Persian chronicler Rashid al-Din claims that Genghis had red hair and green eyes. Although al-Din never met Genghis in person and his account is questionable, such striking features were not uncommon among the ethnically diverse Mongols. Number four, some of his most trusted generals were former enemies. The great Khan, Genghis Khan, was known for his keen eye for talent and often promoted his officers based on skill and experience rather than class, ancestry, or past allegiances. A notable example of this meritocracy occurred during a 1201 battle against the Taijut tribe when Genghis was nearly killed after his horse was shot by an arrow. 
Later, he demanded to know who was responsible from the Thai Jute prisoners. One soldier bravely admitted to being the shooter. Impressed by the archer's boldness, Genghis made him an officer in his army and nicknamed him Jebe, meaning arrow, in honor of their first encounter. Jebe, along with the renowned General Subutai, went on to become one of the greatest field commanders in the Mongol conquests of Asia and Europe. Number 5. He rarely left a score unsettled. Genghis Khan often gave other kingdoms a chance to peacefully submit to Mongol rule, but he was ruthless against any society that resisted. One of his most famous campaigns of revenge occurred in 1219 after the Shah of the Khwarezmid Empire broke a treaty with the Mongols. Genghis had proposed a valuable trade agreement along the Silk Road, but when his emissaries were murdered, he retaliated fiercely. Enraged, he unleashed the full force of his Mongol hordes on the Khwarezmid territories in Persia, resulting in millions of deaths and the total destruction of the Shah's empire. The Khan's vengeance didn't stop there. After his victory, he turned east to wage war on the Tanguts of Shisia, a Mongol subject group that had refused his order to provide troops for his invasion of Khwarezm. After defeating the Tangut forces and sacking their capital, Genghis ordered the execution of the entire Tangut royal family as punishment for their defiance. Number 6. He was tolerant of different religions. Unlike many empire builders, Genghis Khan embraced the diversity of his newly conquered territories. He implemented laws ensuring religious freedom and granted tax exemptions to places of worship. This tolerance had a political motive. Genghis understood that content subjects were less likely to rebel, but the Mongols were also inherently liberal about religion. While Genghis and many others followed a shamanistic belief system that revered spirits of the sky, winds, and mountains, the Mongol Empire included a diverse mix of Nestorian Christians, Buddhists, Muslims, and other animistic traditions. Genghis Khan had a personal interest in spirituality. He was known to pray in his tent for days before important campaigns and frequently met with religious leaders to learn about their faiths. In his later years, he even summoned the Taoist leader Chu Chuji to his camp, engaging in long conversations about immortality and philosophy. This blend of personal curiosity and strategic tolerance helped Genghis Khan maintain a stable and diverse empire. Number 7. 0.5% of modern-day males are related to Genghis Khan. While Genghis Khan's conquests spanned vast territories, his genetic legacy extended even further across the globe. He fathered children with six wives and numerous concubines, starting with his first marriage to Borta. With Borta, he had five daughters and four sons, Yochi, Chagatai, Ogadai, and Tolui, and many more children followed. Although the exact number of his offspring is unknown, a 2003 study suggested that Genghis Khan's DNA is present in 8% of Asian men along the Y chromosome, equating to approximately 0.5% of the world's total male population. Bonus! His Mongol Empire is the largest contiguous land empire in history. The record for the largest contiguous land empire in history belongs to the Mongols, founded by Genghis Khan in 1206. By the mid-13th century, the Mongol Empire had grown to encompass 9 million square miles, representing 16% of Earth's total landmass. Although this peak was achieved after Genghis Khan's death in 1227, it was his early 13th century conquests that laid the foundation for such vast expansion. Under his leadership, the empire extended from China to the Korean Peninsula in the east, and to the Middle East in the west. After his death, the Mongols continued to push westward, 
conquering territories as far as Eastern Europe. 